So we've established that it's best for Hugh to continue to focus exclusively on tomatoes. But notice that by using linear programming techniques, we've been able to reach this conclusion without the need for his being involved in extensive trialling. Notice also that the assumptions determine the result. So if we were to change the assumptions, if over time prices changed or costs change, we would need to revisit the conclusion that we've reached and rework our linear programming example. The mathematics of linear programming is a useful tool. Many economic problems involving the maximizing or minimizing of some variable subject to a series of constraints can be handled when the basic problems are understood. It requires practice so that the problems can be translated into linear programming format, but this is often the only way to solve such business problems. Even where it's not the only way, it will often prove to be the best and least cost method. In this section, we look at non-linear functions. Until now, we focused on problems where we can use straight lines to describe relationships between variables. This included supply and demand curves in film 2 and linear programming earlier in this film. But not all relationships can be described in that way. So here we begin to examine non-linear relationships. How do we establish the price and quantity of a commodity if supply and demand functions are non-linear? Similarly, there may be non-linear functions in the market for labour. And as we shall see, even where a demand curve is linear, some of the important relationships that exist within such markets may not be linear. Consider first of all the market for goods. First, we look at demand and then at supply. It's universally the case that all other things being equal, people buy more of a good when the price drops. But in some markets, that relationship is not linear. For example, when diamond prices fall, initially there may be little increase in quantity demanded because most people still cannot afford them. And I will give you the prices. It's 100% pure emerald cut of 4 carat top white. Cost 108,000 euros, sir. 108,000 yeah. euros. Yes. But if they fall beyond some level, quantity demanded increases considerably now that they've moved into many people's price range. So we'll often find that demand and supply curves will be non-linear relationships. And when we meet non-linear relationships, we can expect to find power terms and we need to know how to use those power terms to find equilibrium price and quantity. Nonlinear relationships are also common for supply curves. This will be especially true in the short run. When firms operate at a low level of capacity and price rises, they can be expected to increase output in response. But if price rises when they're near full capacity, the price rise will not induce much of a supply increase. The capacity constraint prevents this. If it's profitable to do so, a restaurant can easily sell more meals if it has spare tables and some slack in the kitchen. But it's clearly difficult to do so quickly if it's already working flat out. This will not be a problem in the long run when firms can increase capacity, but the short run supply curve will often be non-linear. Economists often use agricultural markets to illustrate how supply and demand determines equilibrium price. That's because it needs many suppliers to be able to refer meaningfully to a supply curve. Suppliers are reacting to prices determined by the market. On the other hand, large firms with market power set price themselves. We'll consider such firms shortly, but for now, how do we find market equilibrium in competitive markets? In an earlier film, we saw how to establish equilibrium price and quantity 
in markets where there are only linear relationships. There were no power terms. But clearly there are times when we do have power terms in our equations. How do we begin to solve for equations when power terms are present, where there are non-linear relationships involved? In this goods market, we have a demand function, which is a rectangular hyperbola, and a supply function, which is linear. The demand curve is given as P equals 100 over QD, where P equals the price in pounds, and Q equals the quantity in thousands of units. Now this kind of demand curve, which we call a rectangular hyperbola, has certain characteristics. The main one is that there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded, such that expenditure on the good is always the same. So TR equals P times QD. P equals TR over QD. In our example, TR equals 100. Diagrammatically, this particular demand curve looks like this. So that if price is 100, quantity demanded is 1. If price equals 50, quantity demanded is 2. If price equals 25, quantity demanded is 4, and so on. Whatever the price quantity combination, total revenue always stays the same. So we have our demand curve, which is a rectangular hyperbola, and our supply curve is of a linear kind that we've met before. Here, the supply curve P equals 2QS plus 20. Now, in equilibrium, of course, quantity supplied has to equal quantity demanded. So 2Q plus 20 supply will equal 100 over Q. Now, to find a solution, we need to multiply through by Q. 2Q squared plus 20Q equals 100. 2Q squared plus 20Q minus 100 will have to equal 0. So we've got a quadratic equation to solve here. How do we do that? It can be shown that a quadratic of the form a times x squared plus bx plus c equals 0 has solutions x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Here, a equals 2, b equals 20, c in our case equals minus 100. This will give us two possible solutions. The first one, x equals minus 20 plus the square root of 1200 over 4, which solves at 3.660. And so that's one possible equilibrium. The second possible solution has a minus answer, which in our case is meaningless. So we know now that equilibrium in our case is where quantity equals 3,660. We can check that solution. 2q squared plus 20q equals 100 where we believe that Q equals 3.660. Then 26.791 plus 73.2 equals 99.991. So that's right, it's not exactly 100 because we rounded to a number of decimal places. We've got the quantity. Now let's find the equilibrium price. P equals 100 over QD. So P equals 100 over 3.660. Oh, 
which gives us £27.32. So in markets where we've got a non-linear equation, we can still solve for price and quantity if we have an understanding of quadratic equations.